Hello and welcome to the video. This is an updated video to one I did quite a long time ago, over 14 years ago at this point, about LiPo or lithium batteries. And I'm actually not just going to talk about LiPo batteries, which are what these two are I'm holding in my hand, but also lithium polymer and solid state as well. And I'm going to put time codes down below because I'm going to talk about all the things you need to know as a new pilot or maybe one coming back into the hobby that maybe last time you flew radio control stuff, you were using NICAD batteries. A couple of quick things on safety regarding these kind of batteries. Uh, these batteries are nice and safe if you treat them with respect. Bad things occasionally do happen, but most of the time, if you look on YouTube, you'll see these things let go and burst into flames are because one of two things has happened. They've even driven a great big nail through the side of it. And to be fair, if someone tried to drive a nail into me, I would probably get pretty annoyed about that as well. Or they short circuit it. And ultimately that nail is kind of short circuiting within the battery as well. So you're kind of getting the same thing happening. Lots of heat is generated via that short circuit that then ignites some of the chemicals inside and it turns into a little bonfire. Now in practice, if you're sensible, that is going to be a very rare occurrence. But the lesson is you treat these batteries with a bit of respect. Some pilots treat them as a consumable. They overstress them, they over discharge them all kinds of things and the batteries don't last very long and we'll let those people down. Obviously higher quality batteries are less likely to cause you a problem as well because the cells will be matched and you won't have issues with one cell uh, going rogue in the pack in the middle of a flight. But modern LiPo and lithium ion batteries are very very safe but you just need to treat them with that bit of respect and do standard things like never leave a charging battery unattended and be cute about how you store them to make sure that they are stored in a safe way and you should be fine. There are absolutely instances of people that have had problems with batteries letting go. The trick is you make sure you don't store them next to anything flammable and when they're charging you never ever leave them unattended. So with that said let's get into the slides. So let's first of all talk about the different battery types that you'll come across. The main one that you're going to bump into is going to be LiPo technology or lithium polymer. Lithium polymer batteries tend to look like this. They tend to be square. And if it hasn't got a complete cover on like this GMB battery here, you'll be able to see inside and actually see the individual cells. Here you can see there's four cells, one, two, three, four, and they're connected in series. LiPo batteries are fantastic. They are very small, but they are very, very compact with the amount of energy that they can store in a physical size, which makes them perfect for radio controlled flying vehicles in particular, where you want to minimize the amount of weight. The other cool thing about them as well is you can pull the energy out of these batteries incredibly quickly. It can deliver a lot of electrical current in a big flow that and that's what you need when you have several motors running at once on a multi-rotor or a high performance model it's fantastic for that and as you can see there's a huge range of sizes available that's a 6s pack but so is that so you can pick the one that's going to be right for your use case the second one that you'll come across is something called lithium ion technology. And you'll tend to find that they look like there are lots of cylinders all connected together. So this, for example, is a 4S pack. There's actually four cylinders in here. This is actually a 4S 2P pack. So there's actually two of those connected together. And what's actually inside them are these kind of cells here. And you've probably seen them around. You find them in things like vapes and other things too. These again, can store a massive amount of electrical energy in a very small space. And you tend to connect them together in order to actually make up a pack that you're going to fly with. They're incredibly lightweight. In fact, they can actually store a little bit more energy in the same physical space as something like a LiPo battery. However, the big downside is they're not able to release that energy as quickly. So they tend to be used in applications where you're not going to pull electrical current as big as you're going to use in something like LiPo. Now, the other thing as well is that you'll read things. This is called an 18650 cell, and that's because it's 18 millimeters across. And guess what? 650 millimeters deep. You can also get them in other sizes and bigger ones too, called 21700 cells. But ultimately inside most of the standard lithium ion batteries, this is what you're gonna find. 
However, there is a one other kind of battery that you're going to start to bump into, and that is something new. That's called solid state. That is where the lithium ion cells are inside the battery. They're not made like this, where they're made of these little cylinders. They actually look more like this. And these solid state batteries are kind of a halfway house between LiPo and lithium ion in that they, again, give you fantastic energy density. A lot of energy is compressed into a very full, small physical space. But again, you can't get quite the same high currents that you can out of something like lithium polymer. So as I mentioned before, batteries are made up of cells and you can actually count it in this one where the side is clear. One, two, three, four. Each of these little silver packets is a cell. And that's what the S stands for. So you can see that this is a 4S battery and you'll find that it's actually got four cells. Uh, if you look at this really small dinky little battery here, this is one of um, a little 6S pack one, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't have to have six cells. You know, there's another four cell battery. This one here is another six cell battery. You can have lots of different shapes and sizes. The more cells you add into a battery, the higher the voltage. So this little battery here is actually going to have a higher voltage than this much bigger battery here. And that's because this one has more cells. The other thing to be aware of is that each of these cells, the great thing about lithium technology is that it never goes down to zero volts unless the battery is basically discharged to be disposed of. The typical range for a LiPo cell is three and a half volts per cell when it's empty and about 4.2 to 4.35 volts if it's a high voltage battery when it's fully charged. And that means that when you're flying around, the speed of the motor is kind of a function of the voltage of the battery. The battery isn't changing that much over the flight time. The other thing you'll notice here is that each of them will have a capacity on it. All of them have lots of these numbers, and we'll talk about the numbers in a moment. But you notice that this one is 1300 milliamp hours. This one is 1400 milliamp hours. This one, which is a bit bigger, is 3000 milliamp hours. And this big 6S battery here is 7500 milliamp hours. That's how much energy is actually stored inside the battery. But you never want to pull all of the energy out. If this says it's 1000 milliamp hours, it doesn't, it's 4000, but let's say for the ease of maths, it was 1000 milliamp hours, you'd only want to pull 80% of that out, so 800 milliamp hours if you're flying around. So I wouldn't want to pull more than probably three and a half or 3,600 milliamps out of this pack before I landed it and recharged it again. Taking more out of it can get the voltage to drop below that voltage level that we're talking about. So below three and a half volts a cell. And ultimately what will start to happen is there will start to be little changes chemically inside these cells that will ultimately degrade its performance. So let's go through a little bit more what the actual numbers mean. Again, we briefly talked about the fact that milliamp hours, that this number is how much energy is inside this battery. The higher the number, the more energy there is. Now, a lot of these are around similar sizes. So uh, this one is 1530, that's a 1300. This is a 1400. And these are typically used on things like multi-rotors. However, larger batteries tend to get used on bigger things like planes. So this big one here, this is quite a weighty thing. This is 6,200 milliamp hours. You'll note that sometimes they will refer to it as 6,200. That's milliamp hours or 6.2. And the reason for that is 1,000 milliamp hours is the same as an amp hour. So sometimes on the bigger batteries, you'll see it referred to as 6.2. On the smaller batteries where it's got less, you'll always almost find it's referred to in milliamp hours. Don't be confused about that. The other thing that you will find on batteries is as well as the milliamp hour rating or the amp hour rating, if it's going to use things like 6.2 instead, you will find that there is another number called the C rating. And it's usually something like in this battery, it says it's 100C. Uh, we have other versions here that um, sometimes don't have it on. They don't always have it, so you need to check the specs. But most of the time it's written on 
that's 100c again on that pack uh what's this one got written on it this is a tattoo pack this is a 45c battery now how does the c rating work well if you want to know how much or how quickly you can pull the energy out of a battery by how much electrical current you can pull then all you do is you multiply the c rating by the capacity and that will give it to you so for example in this 6.2 ampere hour this is going to be a 60 c pack we would multiply 60 by 6.2 and that's going to give us our maximum current that we can pull out of the pack and that's an awful lot of power that you can pull at once usually the way it works is that batteries are kind of specced for two c ratings you have one that it'll handle for long periods of time that's typically the one that's printed on it not always and it'll also support a higher c rating or a higher amp draw for a short period of time but you don't want to do that too often as I said in the introduction, pulling too much current, mistreating your batteries will ultimately shorten their life dramatically and they won't last as long for you and they won't perform for well over time. Pilots who are sponsored, who get their batteries given to them, tend to cane these things and use them as disposable stuff. If you pull less than the maximum current and you treat batteries with respect and do everything I'm talking about in this video, they will last you a very, very long time. So let's talk about how you actually charge a battery. Now you need a specialized charger for something like this. Most chargers these days will come with settings to charge lithium ion, LiPo technology, LAHV, all these different types. And you match the charger to the type of battery that you've plugged in. The rule of thumb is that you always charge a battery at or less than one C unless it specifically says so on the wrapper. Now, this is a 2200 milliamp hour pack if you remember a thousand milliamps is one amp so this is actually a 2.2 ampere power pack so i would charge this one and plug it into the battery charger it would auto detect the number of cells we know how many cells it has it actually has four that we can see at the side or the other tip it's always one less than the number of cables on the balance connector but i would set this up for 2.2 amps as a maximum charge current set it up for a balance charge and leave it alone if i was charging this one here i would set it up to charge at 0.85 of an amp this one would be 1.3 amps this one i'm going to pause a second so you can have a guess 1.5 amps would be what i'd charge that one at this one i would charge at three amps this one i would charge at 6.2 amps so that's the easy way to do it it isn't particularly tricky the only thing you have to remember is if it is a high voltage pack and some of these smaller ones for things like whoops are make sure that the target voltage that's been charged to is set for 4.35 and remember to take that off if you're charging a regular battery that's just um, not a high voltage version and set so that each of these cells is going to be charged to 4.2 volts and that's what the last part of the charge does of a modern charger it gets almost all the cells up to the right voltage so they're all nearly at the 4.2 fully charged voltage again if that isn't hv pack and then what it does is the very last thing it does what's called a balance charge and it just tops up individual cells so that makes sure that every single cell is at ex that exact voltage before it tells you that it's finished i would recommend balance charging a battery when it's new once every five to eight times that you fly it just helps make sure that all the cells are at the same level of charge and they're all doing the same amount of work as batteries get older then you'll find that you might have to spend a bit more time in balance charge as maybe one of the cells starts to degrade and starts to kind of let the whole battery down but we'll talk about more about that in a moment so how do you store a battery safely with all of these horror stories that you've heard of well lipo batteries these kind don't like being stored for long times with full amounts of charge they degrade over time and it accelerates some of the chemical changes that happen inside the cells that will ultimately result in lower performance so most of them will benefit from being put into what's called a storage charge lithium ion batteries these kind these round types tend to be a lot more forgiving 
in my experience, than lithium polymer batteries. These lithium ions will kind of handle being fully charged for quite long periods of time without any serious degradation. These aren't the same kind of high performance cells that you have in LiPo batteries, so they don't tend to be as fussy or delicate. But again, I wouldn't store them for six months at full charge. I'd put them down to a storage charge. And that's another function that lots of chargers have these days. They have the ability to plug it into the charger and it will take it down to a storage charge, which is about 3.8 volts per cell. So kind of in the middle between fully charged and being fully empty. And that means that the battery can go down. It's not fully charged, so there isn't that stress on the cells. But as it gently discharges, as it sits on the shelf, it doesn't go below that crucial 3.5 or 3.4 volts a cell. My recommendation is when you're not using them, store them in some kind of metal container. I uh, like to use things like old ammo cans. You can get them from places on eBay. Uh, I put them in there. And the trick I use is you just put a little nick in the little seal on the top of something like that because you don't want them completely airtight. If one of these starts to vent or gas, you don't want the whole thing basically turn into a big pressurized container. It just allows them to vent if that happens. So how do you know when a battery is end of life because you will get hundreds and hundreds of flights out of batteries like this if you take care of them. Well, the big thing that's going to happen is rather than look like a nice square package, it's gonna start looking like someone stuck a straw in the end and inflated it. If you see your battery starting to look like a balloon, that's an indication that there are some nasty things going on inside the cells and it's time to retire it. The other big hint, of course, is that it won't last as long. If you're going and flying and it used to give you 10 minutes of flying time and now it only gives you eight. If you're flying in similar conditions, then unfortunately that probably means that the battery is giving up as well. The other big tip is that what you'll find is that it's not the whole battery that will give up. It's usually one of the cells within the pack that will start to age out and to perform in a very different way to the others that are by its side means that it will spend an awful lot more time in balance charge. So if you're charging your pack and you suddenly notice that it's spending 10, 15 minutes in balance charge, desperately fighting to get that lazy cell that's getting a bit old up to the same voltage as the others in the pack, that's a point to probably check. And the last one then is that you also check your cell resistances. Now the cell resistances inside each of these batteries will be different, but what you'll find is that they will all be relatively close. You know, some of the higher performance batteries will try and match the resistance, the internal resistance. I've got a whole video on internal resistance. I'll link it below if you're interested. But if you find that one of the resistances or one of the cells is starting to become very different from all the others, and you have those other issues like shorter flight time, it's looking a bit puffy, spending lots more time in balance. That's probably a time that your battery's coming to the end of its life, maybe past the time where you're gonna fly with it, but maybe handy to keep on your bench to use to power things like your hot glue gun or something else. So there you have it, that is the basic stuff. So hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that are new to radio control. Now you know a little bit more about these batteries and how they're a little bit special, a little bit different, and also why we use them so often in the hobby. If you have any questions, please pop them down below. I'll put another couple of links to other playlists that include more basics like this. So if you're new into the radio control hobby, particularly around things like the flying side, then you can learn a lot more about how all the basics work. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.